when temptations comes my way when i cannot stand i'll fall on you jesus you're my hope and stay Probably not what? Yeah, and you have to put that right up to your chin. Go for it. Oh. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> I got that right. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for taking your time out to come and celebrate Robert Thatcher's life. And uh, we just want to call on God right now to open us up in a word of prayer. Father, we come to you today just asking you to ease our hearts, to, to calm our spirits, Father, that was cut quick in the short of life, Father. Just lift us up and, and help us to rejoice his life today. In your son's name we pray, amen. amen. All righty, we're here to celebrate Robert's life. And... Uh, I've asked Brian and Mary to come and, and lead us in some songs and some of Robert's favorite songs. So uh, come on in, have a seat, and we'll, we'll jam. You know, I, it's been an honor to be able to um, ask, be asked to, to lead in, in the worship songs, that, especially the ones that Robert really liked. And... Um, so I would invite everybody. I mean, this, this is a celebration. We're celebrating the life of a brother. So, and, and, I, and I know that he would really, really love it if each and every one of us would sing, would worship Jesus. Use that voice that God has given you to, to praise the name of Jesus in your life. And if any of these songs that we sing speak to you, sing it out. Amen. First song we're going to be doing is called At Your Feet. Mistakes down the aisle. Here at your feet, I lay my day down, not in my strength, but in yours I found it all I need. You're all I Of my dreams, I give to you now, and I find peace. I find peace here at your feet. I lay my life down for you, my king. You're all I want now, and my soul sings.
here at your feet I lay my life down for you my king you're all I want now in my soul sings my soul sings Jesus Jesus at your feet don't you dwell and never leave next song Robert helped me write you know music wise and I'll share on that a little bit later but you know he was always good for putting one thing in on when it came to music and uh, it really really added punch to the it was what the song was missing so amen song called walk in his way
Help me how to love your way. You're my center, my good shepherd. You are my God. Jesus, help me walk in your way. Jesus, help me walk in your way. many people believe that Jesus is your way, your truth, and your life? Amen. Because, Amen. Uh, you know, the Bible says that there is no way you can get to heaven except through him. And Robert knew that and understood it and embraced it. And, you know, and this, this song, whenever we would play at the mission, I'd ask him, what song do you want to hear? And he'd always tell me the same song every single time, you know. And then I told him, well, you got to get up here and sing it with me. <laughs> and he did. He did. Yeah. Because he knew that was the only way he was going to hear the song. So. And, it, and it's, a, it's a daily cry every day that we need to cry out to the Lord the, how much I need you more.
more than the next part be more than anything and lord as time goes by i'll be by your side because i never want to go back to my old go back to my old life cause I never want to go back to my old life I need you Y'all want to sing with me on this one? It's, the course is really, really simple, and it's a beautiful view. I, I, I get a charge out of it every time I say the word. It's only one word, so it's easy. Uh, hallelujah. Let's practice, everybody. Hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, amen. You know, let's do it one more time. Come on. Yeah, that sounded good. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. Thank you, Brian and Mary and John, for just coming and, and singing some songs. And uh, if I have not got a chance to say hello, my name is Johnny Burke, along with my wife Chelsea Burke over there. We co-pastor New Beginnings that you are sitting in right now. For those of you in the, in the lobby area, there's still some seats if you want to come in. If you've got kids that are loud and noisy, they're no different than the other people sitting here, just so you know. So <laughs> feel free to bring them in, be comfortable. But if you're fine out there, hopefully you can hear okay. Um, so glad that you're all here today. Um, we are live streaming this on Facebook and YouTube as well. Uh, I understand we have a couple of Robert's family members with us watching right now, so we're sorry that you can't be here, but so glad that you're able to be a part of this service as we remember uh, Robert and spend some time um, just talking about him and remembering our buddy. Yeah, come on in. Find a seat. How you doing, Tiny? Um, there's a lot of you who have known Robert much longer than I have. I don't, I don't uh, pretend to have known Robert for decades and decades, and I know some of you are in that category. And we will have an open share time in a little bit where you can share some favorite memories and thoughts and maybe how Robert impacted your life. But I'm just curious, uh, before I share anything about Robert, if you've ever had a meal that Robert had a hand in preparing, would you raise your hand? Yeah, I, I suspected that. Yeah, so, and uh, some of you are going to be disappointed because it's not Robert's cooking after. It's just some cheap sandwiches, just so you know. But at least you got to enjoy um, all those times he spent in the kitchen at the mission um, preparing all kinds of meals with whatever was there. And uh, in case somebody didn't show and had to prepare a meal, um, he was, did that with a smile all the time. And so um, I am, uh, I'm probably like you. I'm a little sad today. But I'm excited at the same time, too. I'm sad because I miss Robert. I love that man. He was such a good man, and he cared about people so much. And um, I remember a lot of conversations that I had with Robert. We talked about a lot of things because as being the kitchen manager for a couple years of the mission, uh, he got to see a lot of exciting things at that back door, whether it be in the appropriate time of day or the inappropriate time of the day. We had lots of discussions. And I remember every time Robert and I talked about some event... And there was always events there. Um, he would share how, like, oh, man, yeah, this guy, he's real thorn in our side. But, man, he needs help. And we want to feed him. And I want to help him. And I want to help him walk through that. And I want to help him to do it. And his, his heart always went out. And uh, in the last year that he's been manager at the mission, I think a lot of you have seen that. There's been a lot of second, third, fifth, sixth, eighth chances for a lot of people that it knew, Robert knew that they needed some help. They needed some help to continue to move along. So I'm sad because, I'm sad because we're not going to be able to enjoy his personality, his heart for other people, his heart for loving on people and trying to meet them where they're at, getting them a warm meal and just spending some time with them. So I'm sad about that. But I'm rejoicing today because I know he's in a much better place. And I know, you know, Robert hit a lot of stuff well. He, you know, uh, he died of a heart attack. He had high blood pressure. He had some physical issues. He didn't talk a lot about them. He just dealt with them. But he's certainly not in any pain. And I am 100% confident of where Robert is today. Amen. I don't say that often, but um, I put a copy of this out there, and, and I have this, and this will go with the family. This is a copy of Robert's baptism certificate. Now, you might think, oh, that's pretty cool. This is, not, this is only as good as the paper it's, it's printed on, right? This is worth five cents this paper. But what happened behind this with Robert putting his faith in Jesus Christ and deciding to get baptized in that very baptismal in this very room in 2018 was him making a public declaration of the inward decision he had made to follow Jesus Christ and give his life to him. And when someone makes that decision to follow Jesus, when they've asked for forgiveness of their sins, when they've repented of their sins and followed Jesus like Robert did, and especially when they get baptized to show the whole world that we know that they're in a better place, they're in that great big house that Jesus has promised that his father has been preparing. So I'm rejoicing today because I know he's in a better place. But I'm sad too because I'm missing him here. I really wish I could have another hug with him. I'm sure you do too. And frankly, my wife's a good cook, but I wouldn't mind another one of his meals, too, just so you know. That's just, just me. There's nothing against you, babe. But. So we are going to have a time of, um, of celebrating uh, him and some stories. So um, I'm going to have a mic, and we're going to ask that, that you come forward and, and speak into the mic here. That'll be so that everyone can hear. 
and the online crowd can hear. And by the way, this is recorded, so you could go back and watch it on Facebook or YouTube later on or share the video if somebody couldn't be here um, so they could hear. So um, I'll ask you to just come up one at a time. There'll be plenty of time for everybody, but we're going to start with a, a couple of specific people, and then we'll move in time. I also want to remind you, there's children present, and we are recording. So watch your language, and you don't need to bring up past things that might still fall under the statute of limitations, just so you know. So just... A word to the wise for you. You can play it however you would like. So um, with that, I think, uh, Kevin, were we starting? Who are we starting with? You, you tell me. But. Okay, come on up, my friend. He doesn't like to introduce himself, but this is Kevin Carlson, our executive director of the Twin Cities Rescue Mission. So. Hi, it's been my pleasure to work with Robert for the last three years. And I can attest to that baptism because there was a change in Robert's heart. And I saw it over the last year and a half. He was getting more and more. I still remember the day he bounced into my office and sat down and goes, I get it. It is all about Jesus, isn't it? <laughs> and I go, yeah. And he was just discovering new things all the time. And uh, he would come in every single morning. We'd go through the list of all the people that he wanted to kick out for 150 years. And I said, well, let's just start with six months and see where we go from there. And sure enough, talk about his compassion. He would call me up almost like clockwork at 8 o'clock that night. Oh, so-and-so. I know we were going to kick him out, but he was so pathetic looking on that bench. I brought him back in. Robert just had this genuine heart. He just loved the guys at the mission. He just wanted to see them succeed. And uh, he took, he was very, very proud of those that did make it and accomplished a lot coming out. And uh, somebody asked me how I was doing. I said, well, I'm doing okay since I had my right hand cut off. You know, R Robert and I built a relationship that w I didn't even have to say something. And he was already, already doing it. Uh, so funny, he would come in. And he'd walk in my office and he would go, oh, wait a minute, I'll be right back. And he'd be gone for 10, 15 minutes and he'd come back with a big plate of food because he knew that I hadn't eaten for quite a while. He goes, you got to eat, man. He watched me like a hawk. And, you know, you get that kind of feeling of, of somebody who cares about you. Robert cared about a lot of people in this world. And I know today is a sad day as that song Hallelujah, the very first part said the, the minor fall. But just remember, we're all going to experience that major lift. And that's where we're going to just rejoice. And I say, Robert's plowed the pathway up there. Uh, if I know better, he's probably up there stirring up some kind of grub for the rest of us when we get there. So he was a really, really good friend. And uh, we, we did... Brian, I, I totally understand when Robert in, introduces something, that one little thing he adds to it. We used to laugh about it. I have a whiteboard in my office, and we'd be strategizing something, and I, we'd have it all mapped out. And he goes, oh, that looks good. Oh, wait a minute, one more thing. And he'd have to add it. And I go, well, if we do that, then i got to move this. So the next thing you know, my whole whiteboard was all mixed with arrows all over the place. And this was over here, and that was over there. And we're writing on the side, trying to get it all squared away, that what we're going to do. And uh, I said, I'm out of room. So Robert's compassionate heart, what did he do? He took 20 bucks and went down to a thrift store, came back and bought me this great, big, huge whiteboard and set that down in my office. He said, OK, I dare you, fill this one up. <laughs> my wife will attest that I can do that quite easily. but. Uh, but that was his heart was always thinking of somebody else, always, always reaching out to other people. And he was very, he was very proud of his sobriety. He would often have to handle some of the confiscated paraphernalia that when people brought in, and it never bothered him. He never twitched. He never batted an eye. He would have no problems destroying a whole bunch of stuff. He was, he was a really good friend. And the mission's going to miss him.
But we're going to have that major lift one of these days, and we're going to be singing hallelujah together. And that's what it's all about. So let's rejoice in Robert and what he's done and what he's accomplished because he, he did have a rough start in life. Some of the things he had to go through as a, as a young man. And uh, like most of us in life, we've all had our ups and downs. Robert had his share, but he triumphed through all of that. And I can't tell you the number of times he was talking about the regret of the choices that he made in life and how it pained him, the, the th decisions that he made that he should have never made. And we, we, we talked through that. And so we want to celebrate Robert finally made that right decision. He accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's moved in a very positive direction since that time. And it's been a great, great time serving with him. And yeah, it is, it is a sad day, but it's also a happy day. So, so thank you for your time. Thank you for letting me share. And we'll go ahead. Um, let me see. Who would like to be next? I don't, I don't do this talking in public very much because I get read, but Robert was my friend long before he got clean. And then when I seen him get clean, I seen him turn into a really beautiful person, even though he really was a good person before that too. And he didn't complain. He never told me nothing was wrong. He always told me I need to get my head right. <laughs> and if I was hungry and he would... I used to camp down by the river, and he would bring me and my own man something to eat all the time. He'd be like, you missed, missed dinner again. I'm like, I don't want to go because I didn't want to pray. And he's all, well, I prayed for you. And that would always bring a tear to my eye, like, you did? Thank you. You know what I mean? And um, I, it just goes to show you that the world's getting harder and harder out there because I'm losing so many of my friends right now. And Robert was a friend. Thank you. So uh, I'll try and stay up here to kind of move it around. This doesn't have much cord, so if you can come on up here. But uh, who would like to share next? I know a variety of people have shared. So. Oh, yeah. I probably don't need a mic. Well, that way uh, his family can hear too. So that's yeah. Um, my name is Shelly. I'm Robert's cousin. I'm more like a sister. Uh, I just want to honestly thank you guys and thank Jesus above. Because if it weren't for God, he wouldn't have been where he was before he left. Um, we went through a, a lot growing up. He was uh, the, he was the baby. Oh, he was spoiled. Um, his sister's watching, going to be watching Sheila, and she's uh, she's having a hard time right now. So, um, but anyway, uh, Robert was a fun kid, always into something, um, but majority of it was good. As we got older, we all kind of parted. You know, I got married, his sister got married, and he went on his way. But we've seen each other, I mean, on a daily for a long time. And then Robert started uh, going through some stuff, and he's battling. And he was, uh, it took a toll on him for a while. I don't know how exactly he found you guys, but boy, I'm, I'm so blessed, real blessed. 
uh, we'd see him occasionally, and uh, we'd come down to the mission a couple times. And um, Robert called me a couple of weeks before I got the news that he had had a heart attack. Uh, oh, maybe before that. I lost, see, I lost two brothers, October and December. And he calls me and goes, oh my, Shell, I didn't hear about DJ, was one of their names. And I said, well, I didn't really, and to be honest with you, I really didn't want to tell him about it because I didn't want him to, to be honest, relapse. I just didn't. And uh, so he goes, guess what? And I said, what? He goes, I'm a manager. I'm a big guy now. And I said, oh, yeah? <laughs> he goes, yeah, I got my own desk. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Robert. Really awesome getting chills. That's really awesome. I said, uh, what, do you got a name tag? He goes, well, yeah. He goes, it's up on my wall. And I said, oh, because I was going to get him a name tag. I really was. And um. I don't know, I, I, I can't, I'm not really good at sharing, but uh, all I can say is I want to thank you guys, Kevin, thank you. I only spoke to you once, but I feel like I've known you forever already, but thank you so much for being a friend of Roberts and all of you that, you know, um, he was happy, he was happy. He had his ups and downs, but he was happy, so... Anyway, I just want to tell you thank you, everybody, and this is beautiful. I appreciate it. I would have been dressed for the occasion, but guess what? Would Robert have? No. He would have had white tennis shoes, a pair of shorts, and maybe a white shirt, and some kind of hat. That's my Robert. So thank you, everybody, and God bless. I'm uh, Shelly's son, so his second, I guess second cousin I would be. But Robert was, uh, he was always a character, you know, growing up we all hung out a lot and and he either lived with us or was within a couple blocks of us for many, many years and he was always around and, and uh, you know, it was tough when he went through all the trials he went through and to see him, he distanced himself from everyone because he was caught up in addiction and everything and and we kind of watched it firsthand, you know, he, he lost his, his sense of purpose, he lost his family, he lost it all, you know, he, he battled it, and uh, it was tough for him, I know, but I just, I'm proud of him and proud of his perseverance and, and the way he battled back, and, and, and the last time I spoke with him a couple months ago, he wanted us to come and play, uh, we have a gospel group that we travel around sometimes and play, he wanted us, he said, what will it take to get you guys to come to the mission, I said, well, let me know, you know, give me a call back. And unfortunately, the Lord took him home before he could get back to me. But I could just, the sense of pride in his voice and as he kind of talked about what he was doing and and just uh, you could tell he was in a place to where he was happy and he was at peace with his life and the things that had happened. And, and I know through talking to some people that he was making mends for those relationships with his children and 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 those things. And that... You know, if I if I don't know if they're watching, but if you guys are watching, your dad loved you very much, and uh, that was the probably I would say his main reason for getting clean and doing the things he was doing, so he could rebuild those relationships. So I know it was hard, and I I know a lot of things happened, but just know that he did love you guys, and and he was trying to to mend those fences, and you know the uh, the Lord called him home for whatever reason. We don't always understand those things. But one day you will when, you know, you know where he is. And that's, that was my first question that popped into my head that I, I was scared of. I said, oh, no, did he relapse? Did something happen? And I was so excited to find out that he, that wasn't the case. And he, it was just something that it was his time, you know. So Robert battled the addiction. But, you know, just feel proud that you guys, even more so than us, because he, he's, he stayed at his, his distance from us, not because of, anything we did, but I think maybe w this was his safe place, right? He was happy here. He knew this is where he needed to be, and he didn't want to slip back into those kinds of things. Um, not that we do those kinds of things, but, you know, old memories, such things. So he had to stay where he was 
to maintain that, right? And so I want to thank you guys again, like she did, that to, for keeping him and giving him a purpose. And because I could tell in his voice, man, he was he had a purpose and he was doing God's work and he was happy. And that is more than any more than you can ask for, right? More than any any kind of gold, any kind of riches. He had it all because he was helping people, and that's what he loved to do. So it's a sad day, but it's happy day because Robert's home where we're going to be one day. So. Faye and Amber and Anthony, if you guys are watching, your dad loved you. And um, I know that what he was doing was not only for himself, but he wanted to set the example for you guys. And I don't know where you're at with the Lord, but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he would want you guys to accept Jesus as well. And he would want this to be an example, his life to be an example of what your life can be. So I just ask you guys, you know, Go to a church, get plugged in, and uh, if you haven't already, you know your dad's in heaven, and, and the only way to get there is to accept Jesus. So I just hope you would do that. Thank you. All right. Who's got a good story? Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Lincoln Young. Um, I cooked a lot of meals with Robert back in the kitchen, Me, my wife and I did. You get doing a lot of talking while you're cooking, you just enjoy the process of making food and, and making something that's going to bring joy and love, which as you can tell, I've been loved a lot in my life. Um, Robert is a testimony of somebody that genuinely, truly walked before the Lord humbly. And as he did so, he wanted to try to find us, well, I was serving him, as you serve him, you change. And I saw him over the years when he was working in the kitchen, then he became the kitchen manager, started doing that on a daily basis, how God gently, slowly changed Robert. And it's beautiful to watch. I mean, just walk alongside him and just watch it happen. I remember many times where in the earlier days when he was in the kitchen, he would have rules to follow. Now he's in charge of administering those rules, and part of him is whether people get fed because they are in line and they're in the right time and place, or whether they show up late and they're high at their back door and they're hungry and they're knocking and they're not supposed to be coming in that late and in the early stages robert was very strong in saying nope nope there's rules they got to do it through the front door they got to do it at this right time and they can't do it and my wife and i would look at him and say but we have extra we have food and he's hungry and what what, what we can do this extra stuff and he would look at us and he could look like a, you could tell the urinal struggle he's going no no, there's rules. I got to follow them. That's the that was the earliest Robert. Well, in time, um, the rules still need to be followed. He understood that balance, but he also understand a growing compassion that grew and grew and grew. It's Christ's love in him that was happening, and then he knew finally figured out how to balance that. And that's a lifelong thing. I probably was figuring that out to the very last day he li lived, but he was doing it in a way that grew love. And uh, Christ, before he left, he left us a, um, a, a command to love one another. He said, a new command I give you, to love one another. That's an old command. But he said, as I've loved you, I want you to love one another. I know many, many pastors that say that, preach that, and have a hard time doing that on a regular basis. Robert did it. He learned to love one another the way that Christ loved us. And when you love somebody in that way, you're truly wanting the best for that other person, even if they're destroying their own life. You want it so badly. You pray for it. You hope for it. You walk alongside them when they stumble and fall. And um, he, it, it takes endurance, and Robert had endurance with that. He went on longer, but he truly, truly loved those that were still having a hard time. When I saw him get promoted up into being the house manager and doing that, God had prepared him for that, but nobody can truly prepare you for that. Raise your hand if you'd like to volunteer for that job. <laughs> hmm, yeah, you all. That's a challenging job. It tests patience. It tests endurance. It tests your faith. And Robert did it, and he did it the best of his ability, but he also did it in obedience to letting Christ lead him along the way. And um, I was there with many times when somebody would walk in at the end, and this was their sixth time that they've walked in completely intoxicated, and they're not going to pass the blood ox test. They, they know it. He knows it. But he's got to test them anyway. And at the end, they have to uh, turn around and pack their bags and go out. That's the, that was the deal of the, that they knew going into it. And every single time afterwards, you could tell it pained him 
to see that happen. It was hurting him, but at the same time, he knew it was what love looked like. I have to be firm with you today, but I can't wait for the opportunity to have compassion on you and open a door where we can talk and continue to work on what's causing the heartache in your heart to want to be able to continue to go get drunk or get high or whatever the issue that the person had because he wasn't just kicking them out in anger. He wasn't just kicking them out in frustration. He wasn't like, I am so done with you. No, that's the exact opposite of where he was at. He was saying, we have to do this. You knew that the rule was happening, so here it is. But inside, his whole heart was saying, I can't wait to that day when you walk back in and we can work out terms and you can get set down and we can start working on what's really going on so that you can go ahead and, um, and begin to um, do what you need to do and to get past this and have the full life, not the kind of life that you've been carving out right now. And so he loved others as Christ loves us because that's how love Christ loves us. Awesome. Watch this first step, Pops. It's a doozy. Yeah. Uh, you know, my name is Steve. Robert, that guy right there, saved my life. I was uh, not feeling good one day in chapel, and he looked at me. He goes, are you all right? And I said, no. And he said, oh, Lord. So they called an ambulance and put me in the hospital. I was in there for three days. I couldn't breathe. And my old ticker was kind of going slow. But right there, I owe my life to that man. Thank you. Hello, my name is Emilio Silvis. Um, I've known Robert for about eight months. Hadn't known him for a very long time. Um, I remember the very first day I came to the mission, and it was right after I got separated from the army after things didn't work out. And I met with Ro I met Robert, and started working with him and learning about the ground rules and everything, and how we did everything at the mission. And Robert always had just from the very first moment I met him I noticed that Robert had a very 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 big heart and throughout everything that happened in his life he always managed to keep it strong and share love with one another for who they were and what they did um, I remember one time that him and I got into it one day and I left, and a few days later, I ended up coming back. Robert and I made amends to each other and started working with each other more. And growing up, for me, I've never had a father, so I looked up to Robert as a father figure to me. Um, every time I had an issue with trying to figure something out, and I just couldn't think of anything I could do to fix the problem, I always went to him, and I'm like, Robert, I need I need your help with this. Like, I cannot do this on my own. Like, I need advice and experience from someone who's been through this before. And every time that's happened, I always went to Robert, and Robert was like, he always, he was like, okay, let's sit down and let's talk about this and figure out what the next step is. So we did. And eventually, within time, it grew on me. Him and I had a really good little connection a strong relationship he if he needed help with something I was always there at that moment be like hey I can help you with this if you need it and I always offered it and when it came time for me to leave for the, to the mission for a while because I was going back into the military I was going into the Navy I even before I even completed the enlistment I talked to Robert I'm like should I even do this like I'm asking for advice do you think I could be able to do this and he's like, dude, if you put your mind to it and you set your mind right, you will make it through. And he was like, but not only you would feel pr proud for going through with this, I would also be proud to see, to see you come back in uniform and be able to shake your hand 
and be like, congratulations, you're now a sailor. And so when my time came for me to leave for the Navy, throughout I was I was there for six weeks before I ended up getting separated again. Um, but every day I just prayed, and I'm like, Lord, just help me get through another day. Just make sure that I still have Robert in my heart and all the advice he gave me throughout my time. The first few months I was there at the mission before I had left for the Navy. And Robert's like, you know, if the, if the Navy doesn't work out, you end up getting separated, we'll save a bed for you. And that when I made that phone call and be like, hey, I'm coming home. And he's like, we'll, we'll make sure that, that bed is open for you. And it's just knowing him for the time that I did, I've always had a strong connection with him with throughout everything. And he made me feel a lot better of a person than I was before because I didn't have that type of support growing up. I couldn't. And when I talked to Robert and started getting to know him more, it just became a wonderful thing. I was always asking, asking him for advice. I was always, always asking him if he needed help with anything at all with, with the mission and everything. And I just looked up to him as a father, like a father that I've always wanted to have growing up that I never got the chance to have. And knowing, and then the day that his time came, it was rough. Like, as soon as we got the news, I just burst into tears. And I'm like, I can't believe this is, ha I can't believe this happened. Like, I've known this guy for, for some time, and I never got a chance to say goodbye to him. And every day when I wake up, I just get this feeling in my head, in, in my heart, I'm like, okay, I know Robert's in a better place now. As much as it sucks not being able to see him every morning and say good morning to him, I know now, now that he's in a better place, that, has, that he has to not worry about any fear, any pain or misery anymore. And I know one day I will be able to see him again. He helped me, and he gave me advice throughout my time here with the mission and showed me what it was like to truly follow the footsteps of the Lord. And I, could, I can't thank him enough for it, and I never will. So thank you. Anyone else like to share? Any? Hey, Jer. Oh my goodness, Jerry's not wearing a cowboy hat. What is going on here? You can wear a cowboy hat in my church anytime, buddy. <laughs> well, I know Robert always. Uh, I I hear Robert coming in sometimes in the back, and he'd say, "No, he's a real cowboy. He's rode horses and bucking horses and everything." It was just like he was proud to know somebody that wore a cowboy hat. <laughs> But, uh, you know, all, all of you who've seen me at the mission overnight, you know that I play different types of music. I don't always play gospel music, but I take music that you, I feel is relevant to the lives that you're leading and, and make it understandable. Robert came in, and he'd asked me a long time ago, he says, Jerry, can you play uh, Merle Haggard's uh, Sing Me Back Home? That was it. And it was about a guy being led down through the jails, and he's, as he gets by this one cell, the guy, the guy that's in there is the guitar player. And he says, I'll have my friends sing me more, one last song before I die. And, uh, and, you know, when I got the news about Robert, uh, we had just talked. I was there that Tuesday before, and he wanted to, to talk to me about something. He talked to Nick about coming up to church. Well, he didn't make it up to church, and it was the next day I think he, he passed away. It was on Monday he passed away? Yeah, and so I didn't get to have that last talk with him. But we had a lot of talks throughout the years. And, you know, when, when he first told me he wanted to talk to me this last time, I said, is there something going on at the mission? He goes, oh, no, the mission's fine. And, you know, that's, that's something for somebody to say that about the people that he's working with, that, that he, Robert saw himself as a servant. He didn't see himself better than anybody else or over anybody else, but he saw himself as a servant. That's what the true meaning of minister means, is that you minister to people, that you become their servant. You know, we, we look a lot of times at, at uh, you know, the Bible and it says like, like a flock of sheep and everything. And, and we think, you know, yeah, this guy is the, you know, he's the shepherd of the flock. Well, let me tell you, I've raised sheep, and, and you're not the shepherd of the flock. You, you're the one who does all the work, all the running, everything else. And that's what Robert did. 
Robert, he worried about you guys. He prayed about you guys. He served you guys. And, you know, a couple of years, about a, I guess it was about a year ago, I said, Robert, when are you going to process out of here? You know, because you're doing so good. You get a cook job somewhere, get into culinary school or something. He goes, I still need to be right here. I still need to be right here. And the other day when he told me it was not about the mission, I knew that he still needed to be right there. And, you know, it is, it is hard to accept that he's gone, but how many of us will get to die doing the thing that we cherish the most? And that was serving the Lord with Robert. And in doing that, he served you, and he gave you guys, he gave you, guys you know, counseling and, and, and comfort. You can, you, every time Robert walked in the room, you just felt comfort. You know, just, and he always had that smile on his face, and he, he you know, the different songs that I'd sing, uh, you know, he'd, he'd, want an, he'd want another song. But finally, he came and asked me about that one song by Merle Haggard, and, and I, I learned it and just uh, forgot it real quick. But, you know, but he got the, it was something for me to sing that for him because he had especially asked for that. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of other ones uh, that Randy Travis sang, you know, that, that he loved and it be the best of intentions, you know, that's a song. And, and, and how many people here have made promises to other people and it's the best of intentions, but you never follow through with it? Well, he followed through with it. You know, he would do those things. He would, he would have those intentions and he would follow through. And I, and I just, you know, I admired Robert. Uh, I admired what he did is, is standing up in front of people and, and, and being who he was supposed to be. And so for that, we need to congratulate and give praise to God for that we had a brother like Robert. Thank you. I'm just going to keep looking. <laughs> Come on up, Larry. Well, there ain't too many uh, words I can say about Robert that you guys um, don't know. If I can do it without breaking down. Uh, he was an awesome brother. He always told me when I come in the kitchen, I always got to uh, answer prayer. Oh, man, he was the answered prayer. He was um, something I looked up to. I remember we'd come into the um, kitchen early in the mornings, and we'd talk for hours and lose track of time. And then I'd have to rush to get ready for breakfast while he'd go back to his room. <laughs> I said, you got help? He's like, no. He said, You're the, he said, it's all on you now. But there's some mornings I'd get off of work or I wouldn't be feeling good, and I'd come in there to get ready, get the kitchen ready, and he'd already have it done. Get up at 3 o'clock in the morning just to get, have it done for me. There's been times where he would come ask the uh, staff if we'd take someone back for the thousandth time. And he would look at us and we'd probably be, be all in agreement that, oh, they, they need to stay a little longer. And Robert would look at us and say, made up my mind, they're coming back in today. <laughs> I mean, he was, uh, he was someone I looked up to. I trusted, and I'll never forget the day that he wanted to get Tara, and uh, I said, oh, okay, we'll go looking, so we went looking, and went to his favorite pawn shop, and uh, not pawn shop, but it was a guitar shop, and he's like, he saw me he liked, and I just got paid, so I was like, okay, you can have it. He looked at me, you really? really? I said, don't make me tell you again. I said, it's yours. So we got it, and he was real happy. But I didn't do it because of that. I done it because he, means so, he meant so much to me. He means so much to me still. And I miss him every day. Every day I feel like I want him to, he's going to come to that kitchen and say something funny or I just miss him.
Hello, my name is Geraldo Rodriguez, and I became acquainted with Robert a couple of years ago uh, when I became a volunteer in the kitchen. Um, I'm always looking for ways to give back to the community and help those who, who are least fortunate. And, and when I met Robert, I immediately knew that he genuinely cared and loved others. You know, I didn't know his past when I first met him, but as time went on, he shared more and more with me as he got comfortable with me because he knew that I, too, was a man of God. And we had several conversations about the Lord and his goodness and his grace and where he had brought us from, and he was truly grateful for that. And he lived it, and he demonstrated it in his life every day. Um, a short time after I got to know Robert through that volunteering experience, COVID hit. And I was not allowed to come back to the mission because no one on the outside was allowed back for health reasons. But in that short time I spent with him, getting to know him, I truly can say he was a man of God. He walked the walk. He didn't just talk the talk, but he walked the walk. So we shouldn't be sad for Robert today, but we should be joyous um, because he died in Christ. And the scriptures tell us that when, when our Lord comes back, the dead in Christ will rise first. So he will be with our Savior based on the life that he lived. And he was a good man. He will be truly missed. And I just want to say that I, that I love that brother, and uh, I hope to see him again someday. And, and God bless the family. God bless you all. Thank you, Gerald. Hey, make sure you see Leonard on your way out. He's always looking for volunteers in the kitchen, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any of the other staff members that worked with Robert? I know, I know a lot of you guys aren't super talkative. I get it, but uh, I know uh, Ken and Bo and a couple other guys here, Stefan and Joe. Any of you guys want to come up? I know it might not be your favorite thing, but ooh, look at that shine, boy! You looking good. Come on up. Hey, thank you for uh, hosting this today, Johnny. Thank you for having it late in the afternoon because I'm not a morning person. Most people know that. Uh, you know, it's just, I'm so happy to see some of the people that I haven't seen in such a long time that know and Robert and are here with us today. And uh, uh, I know it was very important. Uh, it's very important to the staff members that to see that too, you know, uh, uh, to know that there is, other people that are showing up that are not just, you know, coming in on a regular basis, but, you know, haven't been there for a while and are here today with us, and thank you for being here. Um, it was a difficult situation the past couple of weeks, I just, or the last two weeks, I've just been, you know, uh, thinking about things and you know, just reading and reading the Bible and just finding things and reading quotes and just trying to figure out what I could say. And, and uh, you know, I just, I really don't, I just, I, I was telling Bo this, this morning, we saw Jerry. I don't know if Jerry's here today with us. Yeah, we saw Jerry last night with one of the guys that was, a, he was a resident there and and uh, we saw him last night, and uh, we told him about the the service today. And um, and uh, you know, throughout the two weeks that I've, we've been talking to people about Robert, there is that one common thread about kindness and compassion. And we all have it, but the big difference in Robert was it was unconditional with him. He did it no matter what. He didn't. He did it for the Lord. And uh, that's to me is a great thing, um, and, and I hope his family uh, uh, sees that and understands that here today. Um, just a 
couple quick stories. Uh, Robert was an interesting person in the way that you could be working next to him and he could say something or you could say something to him and there was something that you just knew that we were talking about the same thing and we'd have a laugh. Uh, the first time that I really had a, 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 an incident was the time that you and Brian and Robert wrangled that guy that, that one morning <laughs> in the hallway. And it, but it started out with me walking in the kitchen and me stopping at the, kit, the dining room door. And I can't remember the guy's name, but he was standing right there by the, the window. And Robert's in the window, and he kept looking over at me like, you know, like, you want me to do something about this? And so he was just standing there, staring at the side door. So I stood up behind him, and I asked him real quick. I said, what are you doing? And he turned around, and he goes, oh, I want to go into the kitchen. I said, let's go in the kitchen. And my whole thought the whole time was, I'm just going to guide him out the back door. See, I'm brave enough to do that because I knew Robert was there. And he was right behind me the whole time. <laughs> and so when we got him out the door, he got into somebody's car, and then, and then he came back. Uh, he didn't get very far. It was, but anyway, he came back. And then there was more, like, people talking to him, telling him to leave. And I'm finishing the dishes, and Robert's at the window, and he looks over at me and goes, he's coming back, isn't he? And I go, yeah, I think so. <laughs> and so there was just like, there's times where you just knew what he was saying or you were saying to him, he would just have that, like, he understood. And um, I think the only other, like, there was so many other times that we would just have these one-liners and I would just start laughing. But the one thing that always, like, stuck with me about Robert was the one morning I went over to the staff side, and he looked at me and goes, I think Caesar's stalking me. <laughs> I looked at him, and I said, what? He's following me around. And I said, well, Robert, you feed him. So he goes, yeah, but I think he's stalking you because I already fed him. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it was just, he just, he, you know what, he always, like I said, he knew what you were talking about, even though you didn't know what you were talking about. And uh, he, he, had a, he had that way about him. Uh, like, there's so many other good times that I've had with him, just laughing and, and, and just, you know. And that's the beauty part about today is that, you know, we can have this big party and the guest of honor is not here. And we're, but he is here. You know, he's in our hearts, you know, and, uh, you know, to me that's important that his friends are here and uh, his family is able to see this. This is, that was, that's to me is just incredible. I know he was just joyous when he spoke to his family and uh, looking forward to spending some time with them. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. And, uh, but you know what? The Lord lets you look down upon people when they're doing good things. So we all got to stay good, everybody. <laughs> so if we want Robert to look down on us, you know, we have to mind our P's and Q's. And, you know, again, just thank you for everything you've done here for us. And Kevin for being there and his wife, Christine. Uh, yeah, this is Robert's, Robert was a hell of a man. And, uh, you know, he might have only been at the mission as a staff member for, what, a couple, three years. I mean, to me, it seemed like a lifetime because he was always there. And he was always part of the family long before he even became a resident and a staff member. So we just thank everybody for being here today. And I hope you all um, keep, him in his, keep Robert in your hearts from here on out. Did you just say Robert was a hell of a man in church? Did I hear that from you, Stefan? I'm going to call up the father down the street. I know. I'm going to call up. I'm, I'm going to call up St. Joseph and say, you hear this guy? I love hearing the humor because, you know, if Robert was here, we'd be laughing it up, too.
Uh, Brian is going to be coming up and sharing and uh, and doing what we call the eulogy. Is, is there anybody else who just wants to share real quick before we get into th that there? Because y'all you know Brian can talk for a while. You got that right. So Okay, so cool. All right, Brian, they are yielding to you. So, Mr. Barber, will you come on up? You know, I'm a little upset that um, Robert left to make me have to dress up like this. Because um, I almost introduced myself as Johnny Cash. <laughs> anyway, uh, my name is Brian Barber, and uh, they asked me to do uh, Robert's eulogy. So, and this is. Something I've never done before, so thanks for that, bud. But it's an honor, you know, to be able to share what I know about my bro. You know, so Robert Kenneth Thatcher <laughs> was born July 29, 1971, in Fremont Hospital. So there's the first problem. He was born in Sutter County. Because everybody knows that Sutter stands for someone up there thinks everybody's retarded. <laughs> True story. <laughs> and he was promoted to glory on May 30th, 2022. He had a wife named Jennifer. You know, he never talked about her. He survived by his kids, Amber, Faye, and Anthony. You know, if you're watching. <laughs> From the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, that man just expelled love. He was the epitome of grace and mercy. And um, he was not a selfish man. You know, he was also survived by sisters Sheila and Shelley. Thank you all for coming. You know, he'd brag about his cousin and his band. Now the guys are rockers. Robert wasn't that bad of a, a guitar player either, except that, you know, my nickname for Robert was Soundbite. Because <laughs> all he would ever do was 16 measures for me on a song. I could never get him to play a full song with me. And uh, that picture right there, I was, I, was, I was fortunate enough to be able to take that picture on his birthday when I gave him that guitar. Two days later, he gave it to somebody else. True story. That's Robert. That's Robert, you know. Robert was never selfish. He was not a selfish. You know, like 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 a lot of people who were born in Sutter, they had a broken childhood. We all we all have experienced our set of brokenness. You know, he had a hard life in and out. You know, wandering, not not really knowing his place in life. You know, and we know that the devil looks for for brothers like Robert who are wandering, searching for what their purpose is, and uh, found our found himself drug addict, homeless. Dumpster diver. You know, he would often tell me how dedicated he was when he got on methadone. And he said it didn't matter if it was raining sideways, upside down, or backwards. He would walk in the rain to get his morning dose. And then he'd walk back day after day after day. 
I was fortunate enough to be called out of, uh, out of the, the, the life of addiction, you know, one year prior in 2017. And I, I had known Robert on the street, you know, but there, it, it, as people have shared, there was something special about him. Something special. He was a completely broken vessel. And along the way, the good Lord was picking up the pieces that dropped away, that fell away in his journey. Because when we're born, we are born as perfect vessels. And when we fall away and, and go through life, those pieces of that, that you, you become cracked and you break. The Lord is looking for broken vessels. You know, Robert came to the, uh, the mission in uh, January of 2018. You know, and, uh, and at that time, you know, beforehand, uh, peop- uh, one of the requirements was is you had to uh, pass the urinalysis test to get in to the mission, which is almost like trying to keep the law of God. It's impossible for some people. But through Jesus Christ said, come as you are. Come as you are. And Robert showed up. I remember Robert came to the gate. He, he, was, he wasn't too many months after, after getting out of jail. And he had relapsed because he didn't have anything he thought he could go to or apply himself to. And he said when he got out of jail and he started getting high again, he hated it. He hated it. But he had no other options, so he thought. And this is the beautiful part. The but God moment. But God, at the mission, had changed the requirements to where we started what we called the blackout period, where nobody could get turned away. Because when you're when you when you're an addict, it's so hard to try to be able to get at least to get five days, let alone one or two. And he showed up, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, it was raining, it was cold, he had the t-shirt on, shorts, shoes, no socks, and it was cold. And, uh, it was, and I asked him, I said, hey, man, why don't you come into the mission? He says, man, I can't, I'm dirty. And I said, you know, it's funny you should say that, because we just so happen to have changed our policy. You can come in, dirty or not, but you have to agree to go into a two-week pro, uh, blackout to get to, to detox, to get it out. He says, yeah, man, but he says, I, I, I take methadone. And I remember looking at him. I said, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, brother, and you can break that. He said, okay, I'll give it a shot. And he did. Anybody who says that they can't break the bonds of methadone, which I think is is just as bad as heroin, and even worse because they give it to you for free. I watched that brother sweat. I watched that brother hurt. And I watched that brother be, ha, have to endure the B side of the mission during his detox, which is worse than B pod in, in Yuba County, by the way. <laughs> but he had brothers that God had put into his life to help support him get through it because he wanted to leave a few times. As, and We'd say, no, nah, bro, just stick it out. Just give it one more day. Just give it one more day. But it wasn't us that was speaking. It was God 
speaking through us saying, don't give up on me yet, Robert. For the plans I have for you are plans for you to prosper, not by man's standard. And, and as he's going through this detox and he gets, and he gets off of a blackout, okay, we're going to put him on staff because there's something special about Robert. We want to keep him close because there's something there there's a light inside him that needs to shine. And uh, he made the claim that he could cook. To me I think that's just a claim. <laughs> but we put him in <laughs> We put him in the in the kitchen and talk about dedication. It got to be to where you know I mean when normally at the mission it it, it takes about three to five people to run that mission or the the kitchen to be able to be there during the day to take donations, to be able to go in the pantry to organize it to prepare the, the breakfast and then hopefully you had you had another another shift that would be able to come in and do the the dinner. Mission uh, it got to be to where Robert was the lone was the lone person in the kitchen. And I watched that brother for three years. Three long years. Get up Five o'clock in the morning, open that kitchen and not leave until at least 9.45 at night. Oh, he grumbled about it. Oh, you, you betcha. <laughs> but dedication because there's something special about Robert. Robert has found a purpose. He had found grace. He had... He, he found what, what God meant by, you know, serve God, serve others, and if you have some time, serve yourself. But you know what? That was never part of the equation in his life. Whatever he had, he gave it away. It drove me crazy. Yeah. I was like, what are you doing, bud? He was like, you know what? They needed it. They needed it. Somebody would show up at night, 10 o'clock at night. They're hungry. He's opening the kitchen. To give them something to eat. Why are you doing that, Robert? They're hungry. The epitome of grace. He was a firm believer in mercy over judgment. He was a grace giver because he got to receive grace. You know, he, he was a servant of God dedicated to the broken. And the whole time that he is at the mission, the potter of the vessel that we call Robert is putting this vessel back together, but he is filling the cracks with gold, which makes this vessel priceless. You know, I, after I moved out of the mission, I continued to come there and, and you know, because Robert and I had, had a very, very special relationship. His name is Jacob, my dog. And uh, after I moved out, he, Robert kept telling me, well, you know what? Yeah, you moved out, but you know, you need to bring your dog over every once in a while so I can spend some time with him. And, and I did, you know, and, and Jake needed to be with Robert. And, uh, and he told me, he said, there were so many times when he was just having so many hard days, just, just days where he felt that he couldn't, he just, just wanted to explode. Not saying he ever said he was tempted to go out and use because that was never an option for him. Jesus had taken that option off the table for Robert a long time ago. But just the stresses of life, he would 
he could uh, he could just be around my dog and and he was he's the only person I would trust my dog with you know because he protected him you know anytime there was a dog around and Jacob was right there he'd hold him like a baby protect him he was a protector but the beautiful thing that I loved mostly about Robert was watching the transformation of his mind from worldly thinking of judging sin, looking at somebody going, oh, well, that person did that crime, so you know what? I don't like him. He's got to go. He did this. He's got to go to where he actually started looking at people the way Christ looked at people. Clean vessels. Everybody needs to be loved. You know, the night before Robert died, or I'm sorry, I retract that, because he is not dead. He is not dead. He's just asleep. He's sleeping in Christ right now. But the night before he uh, before he left here, before he got promoted, he uh, he sent me a text. You know. And he'd always every once in a while he'd always send me these texts, and it's always like at ten thirty, eleven at night, and I go to bed at nine. You know. But uh, I read this text, and he, and, he, and he said he just wanted to express to me and how much he appreciated the friendship he and I had. And he said, I just wanted to thank you. And the last word I ever said to Robert, you're a dork. (laughs) (laughs) You know? So, um, but he was the epitome of mercy. And, um, I'd like to be able to close this out today with just a couple of scriptures, if you don't mind. Glad I got my glasses on. Huh? You want me to read that real quick, brother? What's your name? Ralph. Ralph? Mm-hmm. Who are you to Robert? When I got out of prison after seven years, it's about six months ago, Robert took me in, and uh, that night would have been my appointment with death. And because he took me into the mission, I'm still here today. Amen. Yeah. Amen. His grace and his mercy, like you said, he looked at me like Jesus looked at me and took me in that night, and here I am. Amen, brother. This is my scripture to him. And to all you people that knew Robert, you know. There you go. You want to read that? Yeah. It's Paul's epistle to the church in Thessalonica. Chapter 4, verse 13. And now, brothers and sisters, I want you to know what will happen to the Christians who have died, so you will not be full of sorrow like people who have no hope. For since we believe Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus comes, God will bring back Jesus with Jesus all the Christians who have died. As Paul says, I can tell you this directly from the Lord. We are still alive and living when the Lord returns. will not rise to meet him ahead of those who are in their graves. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the call of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And first, all the Christians who have gone to the place of rest will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and remain him with him there in heaven forever. So comfort and encourage each other with these words. And Robert, with that trump call, that's the next time I'll see you. I'll be looking forward to it. Thank you, brother. Amen, Amen brother. Thank you. You know, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be reading out of Romans chapter eight, verse thirty-one through thirty-nine. It says, "What shall we say?" To those things, if God is for us, who can be against us? 
He who did not did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all these things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? No one. It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercessions for us. Isn't that nice to know that Jesus is intercessing for us? Amen. As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And Robert, I believe, held on to that. Nothing can separate him from the love of God. And that love that God gave him he could not hold for himself. He had to give it away. And that's where he found his happiness. And I am thoroughly, thoroughly convinced that when, when, when Robert stepped out of this life and into the presence of the Lord, as it says in Matthew 25, verse 23, and the Lord said to him, well done good and faithful servant. He was a drug addict. He was homeless. But if you look around here, that's not who Robert was because, you know, he is impacting each and every one of us so profoundly through Christ's love, through his humility toward all men. Robert is, I have not a shadow of a doubt. I'm looking forward to seeing him. And I'm, you know, I, I, I am so blessed. My wife is blessed. My dog is blessed to have been able to watch him grow, to witness the transformation of a worthless, broken down, homeless, un, whatever you, whatever the society wants to call a person who's broken. Take a piece of coal, how's that? Being crushed into a diamond. And that's how he came out the other side. So, you know, on behalf of my wife and I and the mission and everybody here who has been part of Robert's life, you are the true testimony of his work. The epitome of mercy and grace. And when I looked that word up today, because I wasn't sure, because I heard pity, you know, I, I wanted to make sure I wasn't stepping out, uh, speaking out of line. It says to, to the perfect example of. He was the perfect example of God's love. We want to thank you all for showing up today. We want to thank his family members, and I hope that I would like everybody to know who's watching online and everybody here the impact that Robert Thatcher had made on so many lives of everybody here and everybody who hasn't been here. I mean, this is a pretty gosh darn good turnout for some dope feed, right? <laughs> Diamonds. Amen. So, um, thank you all for letting me share.
Yeah, I wanted to get to know that man who went cold turkey off methadone. There's some in here that know that that's not an easy trick. So, but he was filled with love. And I do want everybody to understand, especially the family, that from my point of view of knowing Robert for these last three years, we just barely touched the surface of a lot of his characteristics. And so there was a lot to Robert that's going to bubble over for years to come at the mission. So I want to stop and thank everybody for coming today, those who have shared their, their thoughts and their experiences. And I uh, want to invite everybody to stay in honor of Robert from the kitchen of the mission. We have some sandwiches and stuff to have to eat before you go on. So let me conclude this service in prayer. Father, we come to you today knowing that our hearts are lifted with the celebration of who Robert is. And Father, he is in your hands today. And we are so thankful that you picked him up so many years ago and you called him out of that lifestyle. And we praise you, Father, that he accepted that challenge and he left. And he spent his life trying to instill in others not to go down that same path. The model of who you are, Jesus, loving on other people, even when some of those people are really difficult to love on. He loved them just like you love us. So, Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we can celebrate his life. And we look forward to being able to reunite with him in our walk into that celestial home. So, Father, bless everybody here. Give them a safe journey to their locations. And we just want to thank you so much for the provisions of the food. And just thank you for that, Father. In your son's name we pray. Amen.